Uh, hi everyone. Um, today I wanted to uh, take a look at Australia, and for some reason it totally flipped this around. Um, so Australia, this is Australia here, this whole gigantic piece, and uh, there's just a lot of reasons that I was really interested in studying Australia. So it's primarily uh, an economic uh, discussion. Um, I'm interested in uh, trying to find some uh, projects to work on. So. Um, but uh, from a uh, kind of like an astrophysics perspective and a holistic perspective, um, I first started to get interested in Australia actually because of Antarctica. I noticed Antarctica looks like a brain here. And I noticed that the uh, magnetic south pole is right here, which is off of this tip is the magnetic south pole. So if you look at some of these uh, NOAA diagrams or... Uh, U.S. Geological Survey, they'll show you the uh, electromagnetic field diagrams, but that's a whole separate topic. But it turns out, uh, if we're looking at the economics of a big region like this, uh, we kind of got to compare that to other regions. Um, so basically, we have Indonesia here, Philippines, and then even Japan, uh, and of course, Singapore and Vietnam and uh, parts of China here. So, But Australia, the interesting thing about it is it has kind of the same time zone as most of Asia. Um, however, uh, most of the people in Australia live on this coast here. And then there's also New Zealand out here. So for this discussion, we're primarily going to focus on Australia, but a little bit on New Zealand. Um, I'm just going to show you a quick couple cool maps so you can kind of see the climate. Um, so the climate here, uh, kind of like America, uh, maybe California-ish, um, and then getting a little bit colder as you get south. And then there's a couple little spots here uh, that have different climate. So you can kind of zoom in and take a look at that um, if you want. Add this to Google Earth. you can got to download it. Uh, and then there's kind of a population map. So you can kind of see um, here, uh, you know, essentially it's kind of hard to see. If I can change the color, kind of start to see the rest of the Earth show up here. So basically not a whole lot of people in Australia. This is Perth out here, Sydney, Brisbane, and Melbourne. Um, and uh, so this is the population. Um, and then if you look at the Earth at night, you can also see kind of the city lights. So I'm going to just zoom out and first show you the city lights, compare that to India. And uh, you can even see that little spot here on New Zealand uh, in their big city. And I'll just zoom in here and you can start to see essentially what's going on. So this whole coastline is basically Australia. And then I'll add the population into this. So if I change this down and kind of weaken that, I can strengthen this one. And then you start to see, basically there's not a whole lot of people, but on the rest of the Asia, there's a ton of people here, right? And it's really just surprising. And this is not, it almost looks like there's nobody living out here relative to here. So that raises a very important question about economics um, because basically gigantic, area here and no one's living there except for a few Australians uh, and what's going on with the economy why is the economy so good in Australia or is it good and how do we start to think about that so basically uh, this is the start of a bit big project now so we're gonna dive into so many details so I have a lot of discussion here a lot of cool information and uh, I'm gonna try to take a look at this as carefully as possible. So there's just uh, a lot that we're going to discuss um, and uh, let's get started. Um, so before we get too far, um, you know, one of the reasons I was kind of interested in Australia is because the environment, right? And actually also because of some astrophysics stuff. And it turns out that there is some uh, very new telescopes being put in, radio telescopes in Australia. And also, curiously, uh, you'll see this impact craters on Earth, and you notice a ton of them are somehow in Australia, and then also here in North America, and then some new ones here. So if you look more carefully at this map, down here it says these are within the last million years, so these red spots are newer ones, uh, so there's still some couple new ones in here, and then some ones in North America, and then in uh, there. So if you believe in some kind of mysterious qualities of what's going on, Australia may be very interesting. Um, so there's a couple things going on here now, right? So now we have this Tasmania pointing to the magnetic north south pole. Um, and then you have kind of a weird um, 
asteroid hitting there, um, and some other things. So uh, we have to ask ourselves a lot of questions about this strange area, Australia. So uh, to get started, um, I really use this all the time. So this is a Harvard Atlas of Economic Complexity. So here it is, Australia. And the darker the color here, the more that they are exporting to. So this is where Australia makes their money from. So this is in the $100 billion plus range. So if we highlight this, you can see it's uh, not quite $100 billion of exports, but $39 billion uh, to China. And you can see, for some reason, they're not exporting very much to the United States. So, but they do get a lot to India. And that may be because of the shipping. We're going to study so much stuff here. Um, here's the shipping routes, for instance. Uh, and we're going to look at exactly what happens for just a ton of stuff. So, but first of all, we just wanted to see what's going on. So basically, China and Japan are the big trade partners. And that is interesting because they're not doing very much with Indonesia. 2 billion versus 22 billion. That's 10 times factor to Japan. Um, and even Brazil is getting uh, quite a lot here with almost a billion, uh, and that's quite far because you have to ask yourself, well, they're going to have to take a boat all the way around here and then uh, cross. So why wouldn't they just go over here and maybe go to L.A. and uh, ship to uh, there? So on import side, we're going to see this. So and so actually we are making a lot of money sending products to Australia. So this is a good sign uh, because, hey, if I'm – trying to do work with Australia, but at the same time, maybe it's already just the economy is too much heavily sending products there. And you can also see some mysterious ones, like here, Thailand. Um, Thailand uh, importing uh, quite a lot from just Thailand. So that was, what was that? Uh, that import $5 billion from Thailand. And from the United States, $17 billion. So uh, I'm not really sure what that is. We could find out. It might be food, uh, rice, coconut, other things. And nothing really from Indonesia, nothing from importing from there, and then uh, some stuff from Malaysia. And then interestingly, you can see uh, getting some imports here all the way from Germany. So how that would happen is kind of unbelievable. I have to ship that all the way around Africa and just here. So, And then really on this side, uh, exporting – to Brazil because on the export side um, they had exports and then basically just changing here so a uh, very interesting map in general if you're so because we're primarily in the economics here the reason I got interested in this is uh, just as a disclaimer I'm interested in investing in some uh, kind of uh, spiritually related uh, uh, companies that deal with earth so uh, here we have coal, petroleum, and this is pr almost 50% of their economy, and they have a lot of gold too, which is 5% of their export economy. And you can sort this by net. So tourism is actually a big chunk of their economy, so it's actually 20%, but when you look at the profitability of that, it's only about 4%. So basically coal is huge. Um, I've heard – big percentage of the world's total coal supply so at one point so the other graph that i really like here um is looking at over time so you can see uh basically minerals here and agriculture so it's kind of hard to see that uh on just the other graph uh when you're looking at the exports right uh you can see that food was important um and uh but it kind of gives you this changing over time now, the global share is also very important to look at because then you can start to see kind of the strength of the country. Um, and uh, here you can see that minerals actually has been going down in recent years. That's a bad sign because – good sign too because maybe they're just over mining Australia. Um, and you can see this is probably stone I think here um, and so on. So, uh, But this is a big number. So if you're doing 4% of the – 4.5% of the total Earth's minerals. That's a lot of stuff. And so when we looked at the export map, we can kind of guess that most of these exports um, are probably mineral related. So they're sending a lot of uh, minerals to China and India and Japan, maybe for auto manufacturers there. Um, but uh, in general, you can see uh, this here. Now, the other thing is you can see services here kind of remaining stable. And then kind of a falling point here on this light pink, uh, which is 
I believe metals, right? Uh, no, maybe not. So uh, it's probably metals, but anyway. So, uh, and then you can see this uh, lightest pink down here, which is chemicals. And those areas of the economy have all been decreasing relative to the entire earth. So it's, you know, even these, some of these may be interesting to invest in. I did kind of print up a list of all the companies that are traded. So I just changed this here to the market. And you can kind of sort this by, this is sorted by income. So this is profitability. So BHP is the number one. I kind of liked looking at their websites. It was really interesting to see, you know, essentially what the companies are doing. These are these big mining companies um, are the top two largest. Um, and that makes sense. Um, but you can go through and do the list and even check earnings per share or PE ratios or just total revenue. And the Yahoo one sorts it by total revenue. It's a little bit harder to edit, but in some ways it's nicer because you can just quickly click and you quickly click on that one too. But uh, anyway, so going back here, uh, you know, in general, there's a big page on the economy of Australia and it's just got a ton of stuff. So on the right side here, you got kind of the basic facts. So we got uh, basically 25 million people in Australia. Um, so by comparison, the United States has 300 million um, and a GDP of 1.4 trillion and their 14th largest GDP rank in the world. So that's one reason that you might want to study them. Here's kind of a map. Um, I think you even have a map in a mo moment. Um, and you can kind of see their economy is primarily services. Um, and this does not make sense to me because it does not match with the export graph on um, the other uh, thing that we we're looking at for the Harvard Atlas of Economic Complexity, right? So this should be a breakdown of essentially how much they're exporting, which would be their profitability, and that should match here somehow. Uh, but it doesn't. So uh, anyway, so you can see uh, the labor force, you know, approximately 78% services, 9% uh, construction, 7% manufacturing, 2% agriculture, and only 1.9% in mining. So you're probably making a lot of money if you're involved in mining uh, in Australia because there's not a whole lot of people involved in it. Uh, so that is a concern. I would say, hey, start hiring more people. You don't necessarily have to mine more. Don't just, it's not all about profitability. So, and you can see that about one in every 10 persons is unemployed or one in every 20 say. And that even goes up for uh, the young people. It's about 15% or one in every five are unemployed if you're young. So, uh, and then uh, weekly amounts, you can see this is an Australian dollar. So it's not one to one. Um, so we'd have to convert this and we got a study of that a little bit later here. Uh, this is the currency graph um, that we can kind of look at and we're hopefully going to go through that. But that is just kind of an overview. You can see the exporters. We already knew this. China, Japan, South Korea, we didn't really show up. And why does it show 5% export but didn't show it on the map? So maybe that's a bug um, because it didn't really show that. We didn't see that in terms of exports. And then imports from China. We saw the United States having a lot of imports. So this is why you got to kind of double check the, uh, the data. But there's a lot of other data here that you can look at. And that's just uh, Wikipedia's page. And they actually print two of them. You have to actually search for economy of Australia to get this kind of detail. Um, so I pre-did this to kind of compare over the years. So, uh, so interestingly, Australia, so Japan has got a much larger economy, right? So here's Australia with a one point four trillion and Japan with a five trillion. There's a lot of auto manufacturers in Japan and then even United Kingdom with two point eight. So if we take off Japan and we take off the United Kingdom, then we can start to see Australia in detail relative to Philippines and even New Zealand here. So New Zealand actually doing quite well, I would say, because remember <coughs> and and also there's so many more people in Indonesia. It's almost like it's causing a problem with the economy, but this downtrend was not seen. So in 2016, this was, it started around uh, 2013, right? And even that, it looks like it started in Indonesia first in 2012. So this is why it's nice to compare. So you'd say that when we look at the uh, main graph here, so here's Australia, here's New Zealand, and here's Indonesia and the Philippines. So 
basically in 2012 there's a problem and then it's finally hit australia so basically asia kind of influencing australia more than the other way around and yet australia is a little bit wealthier in terms of gdp per capita so uh, switching back um, so again that's kind of the economic data you can get this from the world bank here you just type in world bank and then type in your locations um, and here's a general map so you can kind of see relatively speaking so australia interestingly right they were far behind japan but they're when they take it per capita they're doing pretty well actually so um, and actually a lot of places in the middle east and germany and europe so that changes everything, right? So now we start to see that uh -huh, average Australian making somewhere in the order of thirty to fifty thousand dollars a year, um, and so on. So, gonna jump to this just as a quick thing. Um, remember, we did see something kind of around twenty twelve, but actually, from a stock market perspective, which isn't necessarily the whole GDP perspective, this is really the bad time, right? So. If we draw in some horizontal lines here, you can start to see what happened here. So that, oops, wrong line, I meant a vertical line. Sorry about that. Uh, and you can even change the color. So let's change the color to pink. Uh, so basically right around here, that was in October 21st, the economy started to crack. And we might even wanna compare that to the S&P 500 and graph it. So now we can see where was S&P 500? So it almost is like it was just about a slightly, like a day, or like a week, couple weeks after. So S&P started to crash and then Australia crashed there. So, and then you can see just not quite at this point when the Australian economy around the recovery of 2009, Australia still was struggling. And you'd say that even here was a very important point in Australian history. So 329, 2015. And sometimes what I do is I'll just search for that date on uh, Google or something or whatever your favorite search engine is and uh, just search for that and then type Wikipedia. And Wikipedia actually has a pretty good entry. And I might even do that for part of this video. There's a lot of information here. Um, but uh, in general, you can see, uh, you know, this is still quite a big change in uh, improvement in the economy. So, but those those time frames are pretty much the main ones. I like to do a log graph of this just to see relative. So you can kind of see that this drop, this is coronavirus right here, about half as bad as this was a housing market. So interestingly, you know, you might want to compare this to the Jakarta Exchange, also to Japanese, uh, Nikkei, even the Hong Kong Exchange, whatever, the Philippines Exchange. All these would be very worthwhile. And each one of these data points in here are very interesting to look at. You can set them up. So let's just look at this one. I'm going to see if I can do that. So that's three, uh, three. So January, February, March of 2015. So if I just type in March 2015 in Australia, and uh, I can kind of do Wikipedia too. Wikipedia, and usually what they do is they do a March of events in Australia. So I can kind of see this really quick. Uh, that one, sometimes they don't always have all the details, so you got to go to this one, 2015. So now it might happen. So the actual problem was in March, January, February, so it might have been February. So you can just scroll down here and see in February and then March events. So that particular data point that we were interested in is on the 29th, so we can see if we can find something. So what happened around there? Disclose elements of past, including criminal, so some kind of criminal problems, state election, um, so maybe a major change in politics and policy. So I don't really believe that politics affects it too much. I think what it is is actually the other way around. So popular culture decides that they want to change the president, and that means something bigger was happening. You can see two Australians, praying crash death just some problems and it might even be the previous month before so hard to say we'd have to look at this in detail so and sometimes you can add for example a price oscillator so I just type price oscillator 
and I can see I can do this on open, high, low, and close. This is an exponential one. You might want to just do a regular one. I'm going to do a simple moving average. So this now is on weeks, so I might want to change this too. So if I wanted to do short cycle, so this would be by seasons, three. So weeks would be actually 13 out of 52 because there's 52 weeks in a year. And now I can start to see these price cycles. So that was the peak right there and this price cycle, the bottom in here. And you can kind of see what's going on with these price cycles. It should kind of match up with this, but it helps. And for a comparison, and another indicator is the uh, true range. So you can add this. And if I want to do average true range over a week, so typical price changes. So this tells you the volatility in their stock market, right? And I'm actually kind of scared to start talking about these numbers. But so during coronavirus, it was like 300. So the volatility was actually higher. And that's because of a steeper decline here. That means every week, the price was changing by about 300. Today, around 200. And we can kind of expect it to be around... 100 change so that I I don't know exactly what this constitutes the ASX 200 is Australian kind of like the S&P 500 but really I was shocked to see so few companies here so on this list it only said matched to 122 and I basically edited this filter to include oh maybe that's why aha save the filter now so the problem there was that uh, it, so there's basically 1,928 stocks, right? And you can even do a heat map after you save it. For some reason, there's kind of a bug. And you can, this is per day. So it's just a one day kind of change. So you can see these bigger companies have uh, some different changes. But uh, anyway, sorry, my friend's calling me right now. Uh, so one other thing is it is possible to do some your own statistics. You can just essentially grab all this data and copy it into a spreadsheet and then kind of do some statistical profiling based on market cap and volume. So you could have one axis be market cap, the other be average volume. And it was super interesting to do this for the U.S. economy. I should really spend the time and do it. If I have some time, I'll try to do it. But it's super interesting because you kind of start to see clusters of companies. So there's certain clusters of companies that higher market cap, maybe higher volume and so on. So, but it's not always consistent across comp companies. So I've had a lot of luck doing that. And it's been super interesting. Um, so again, the Australian economy is one of the largest. It's bigger than Indonesia, surprisingly. So there's a lot of people in Indonesia and, uh, and yet it's still bigger. So, here is their uh, one. So this is a whole huge discussion. I'm going to probably have to come back to this. Um, but this is the Australian dollar to the U.S. dollar. And if you take this orange graph, that's the other way around. So I just wanted to put them both. So they should be exactly parallel from each other. And it's just interesting to see both. So, for example, um, one Australian dollar dollar will give you about 75 cents right and you can see that as that it was one to one as recently as 2012 um, and that's very good for their economy their economy has been getting a lot worse like if you're going from one to one to 60 cents it's just it's almost I mean uh, I, 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 I don't even, it's just absolutely disastrous. So, and I put this on a logarithmic graph, but if you want, you know, all these points in history are very important. And again, uh, you know, you could put these points here. So this was like a recovery point. Um, this was a point at which you were at the highest and then something happened, right? So again, you got these dates here. And then things finalized here on this point. So this point right here, March 1st, 2013, was a catastrophe because basically from then on for four years, it's been 
bad. So if we wanted to look at that, we could do March 1st, 2013, Australia again. March 1st, 2013, Australia, Wikipedia. And if I can spell it right. So thank God it's, uh, so here's the 2013 in Australia. We can go down to March and look slightly before that and just start to figure this out again. Ooh, geez, asylum seekers and uh, just some uh, other theme, like a Supreme Court thing going on and some other stuff. So that that is basically what was happening back in Australia around that time. So you can see the oscillator was quite high here and going down. Now the average true range, again, uh, so on a typical month, you could expect that the currency changes by about seven cents. And that has been going down. And that's because it's harder to change your currency as you get less and less value. So it's basically around three cents or maybe even four cents right now, right? So next month, it could be four cents higher than this, which would bring it up to about 76 cents, we would hope, because Australia, I mean, come on, guys. So it's really, this was a disastrous point on April. March, so this is all coronavirus kind of consequences. And then finally in March 2nd, things started to change pretty abruptly. And that's actually one, this was even faster change up, right? And you can see a really fast down too. So this would be an interesting kind of points, right? So that's, this was actually from the housing market crash. So and uh, this is the low point of the dot com maybe and uh, I don't know so anyway so there's just a lot of data here um, this the World Bank keeps track of way more stuff than I'm looking at um, and you can kind of look at that if you want um, this is the per capita's kind of comparing Australia versus United Kingdom and Japan so Australia actually making quite a bit more and wow it Indonesia and Philippines and I've actually worked on a project studying Indonesia I've definitely studied the Philippines too. Um, and I just, for some reason, there's just, it just was really interesting to look at. I mean, if you look at the, uh, uh, if you look at this, so this is Indonesia, right? All these cool islands and the Philippines up here, and then Japan right over here. So it's just, you know, it's just a huge continent area almost. And, uh, you know, like this area kind of scared me just because of the wildlife problems, it's just a vast desert. And I just really wanted to study this because of sailing. I was trying to think like, oh, what would it be like to sail around here? What's the economics of a more complex country? So I kind of started with these complex ones first before going to Australia. And then I forgot about Australia. I'm like, oh my God, I've got to study Australia. Like this, after seeing the, uh, the asteroids, uh, I was just like, dang, this is super important. So, uh, so that's the... And here's kind of the population. You can see the New Zealand population being about five, five million, and Australia being at twenty-five million. So, uh, basically, five times the size. Uh, so, uh, I did some of my own data here, and I hope this is uh, this is pretty interesting. So, if you get a job in Australia, this is from this uh, Wikipedia page. And you can see healthcare, retail. So we already know that uh, kind of the services industry was the biggest, but you can kind of see retail, construction being 9%, professional and scientific being 8% and so on. So just nice to have the fine details in employment. And then here's like the log graph of that same data. So you can kind of see, aha, uh -huh, like at this point, edu after education jobs, public administration kind of takes a little bit of a hit. It's kind of on a different log scale. Um, so, uh, basically that's something to think about and then accommodations and transportation kind of being similar, but then, the on the services side, so that's like tourism. There's a lot of, little bit of a favor towards tourism in terms of a uh, number of employees. So it doesn't necessarily tell you, um, where the profit is, but, uh, you might like to work in tourism if you're in Australia. That was kind of interesting. And actually to be, uh, Add another detail here is that when I search, I always use Lonely Planet to travel guides and stuff. I don't really like them as much anymore, but uh, uh, but back in the day, when Lonely Planet first gets started, the authors 
did like a road trip along Australia. And so their very first book was on Southeast Asia, apparently. And I thought that was fascinating just finding out because they are very successful with understanding the world. And they started right here in Australia. So I've been wanting to do this study for a while um, because of that reason. So here's kind of a breakdown so you can see that at kind of around here at manufacturing and accommodation food services, there's kind of a thinner slice of the population. And um, there's some other data, professional data, and by city. So I, I just wanted the by city data because you know i just wanted to see so what's going on sydney melbourne and brisbane and if you're not familiar with sydney melbourne and brisbane i'm just going to look at them really carefully for a moment so again uh with this uh graph we basically have this this is the earth at night graph and i'm going to make it a little bit darker so these are their major cities right so that's where their light spots are and then i'm going to add kind of the population and man basically nobody there so Population is hard to see, so uh, man, let's try to keep it. Uh, let's even turn it off. So basically, those are the main cities, and you can see kind of, relatively speaking, what's going on. So it's kind of zooming in here and seeing. So up here, uh, you basically have Sydney, Melbourne, and I'm gonna turn off it because it's actually not very high resolution. So Sydney actually is a pretty awesome city, and I actually think Melbourne is too, but I think that actually just the, the, the real details here in Sydney are actually pretty interesting when it comes down to it. Um, and Tasmania is unbelievable too. So uh, basically we're looking at this coast of Australia now. And there's this city here, this city here. And then so in terms of population, uh, we're going to go back here. So basically Sydney and Melbourne are huge, right? And next closest is not even close. Well, half the size, still pretty big. Brisbane and Perth. So those were the four or five or so big light points that you saw. And if you do that on exponential graph, you can kind of see that essentially these are the top five cities that are all in the same because this line indicates the next, the next one would be 10 million and they're all under 10 million. Um, but, uh, and there's kind of this one city here, Gold Coast area and so on. So I don't even think I graphed everything here. I just graphed as many as I could in the time that I had. So basically Sydney and Melbourne, approximately 50%, you could say, of the population or more, 75% is in these larger cities. Um, and just some interesting ways of looking at that same data. So you can kind of see the growth rates here. So definitely does not show Sydney or these others as growth rates because these are like, it's just hard to get high growth rates. So you can see Sydney here being about pretty stable. So if you're above Sydney's growth rate, maybe that would be interesting to check out, right? So you might have Melbourne, maybe people like Melbourne better than they like Sydney, or maybe Melbourne's more affordable. And these would be the top ones. So you can kind of see maybe a problem in this city and Perth basically being, uh, you know, anyway, gives you an idea for like what people are thinking about where they want to live and relatively speaking so you could just compare so this city here looks like it might be because of work construction who knows um, but uh, that's part of the economics here so all that data came from this there's different ways to look at it I just grabbed it and graphed it myself you got images of all the major cities here which is nice um, I might even try to load these up Melbourne Brisbane and Perth just to uh, see here and you can see here's a picture of Sydney and uh, maybe we got Melbourne looking pretty fancy there and remember Melbourne was growing a little bit faster and uh, Brisbane not growing very fast and actually looks kind of boring and again uh, Perth here uh, on this side of Australia it's pretty flat um, I can probably show you that on a map here kind of see so basically Perth is over here on the other side so we were looking most of these cities being along here and then Perth kind of being at this point and there it is it's kind of flat here it's just this is getting in a desert and and if you look at the climate it's uh, 
just a little bit drier over there on that side, of course. And then this is pretty heavy desert. And then all of a sudden getting back to a very tropical climate. So I use this just for traveling because it's interesting or even who you want to work with. If you could even handle the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, this is borders, turn that off. So, but yeah, so basically we got quite a lot of things here. Demographic of Australia. This has some specific details. So actually the economy GDP per capita was 63,000. So about 64,000. That's quite a lot of money to be making in Australia. Um, next, uh, this kind of map blows my mind every time I see it. So it is a shipping map. So this is actually live data. Uh, and it also has a shipping track. So I'm going to try to turn this off. Uh, and that way you can only see the ship. So if you kind of, uh, and you can even click on some of these boats. It's just an amazing, amazing map. So it's just hard to appreciate how important this map is. So you can kind of start to see just just a ton of ships coming up and around this way. And even, so these are, I actually did a fishing study. These pink boats are fishing boats. Green are cargo. Red are like t oil tankers and stuff. But so a lot of cargo, just a ton of cargo. And it looks like this depends on the time of the day, seasons. They have to check the weather. It's and obviously shipping is just gets fantastically interesting up into these islands, which is one of the reasons that I originally started studying Indonesia and the Philippines. And I was actually surprised looking at these shipping maps, how few uh, boats, relatively speaking, are in China, like with so much stuff supposedly coming out of China. I mean, really globally, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot everywhere. So uh, but the shipping maps are really awesome to take a look at and you can do clustering you can turn this off and on and try to figure out all kinds of stuff and this opacity helps you can kind of turn it down a little bit and see um, and they have a paid thing for this this is the free free one and you can kind of see these shipping paths kind of going through here to New Zealand and uh, I was really upset with some of the fishing going on here I looked at it in detail but Anyway, uh, now next we have a traffic map for the mon for like a Monday traffic map. So you can kind of see how the road system works here. So Sydney and Melbourne being pretty connected. I mean, gosh, it would be so much more fun to drive along the coastline, but faster to go this way, I guess. And um, just to zoom in here, you can see what the Monday traffic looks like in Sydney. It's going to probably take a little while to load. Um, but... Uh, uh, you know why this so this is kind of a view of Sydney, right? So if you do 3d you can even get a 3d map on this and See Basically downtown Sydney. So we're starting to get the map here. Sorry. It's I should have tried to load this before but uh, Kind of see a typical Monday and uh, we're gonna look later on here at a map that shows wealth um, in Sydney Specifically, hopefully, uh, if we can get to that far, we can kind of see a typical Monday morning around uh, you know 9 a.m. Uh, 8 8 8 50. Traffic not being so good right in here, so pretty much people trying to get into this region of Sydney. So just gives you a basic idea. I'm gonna pause this and then load it up so it doesn't have to be so slow for the next Melbourne. Okay, so here we are. Um, basically, I downloaded this ahead of time here, so it should be a little faster now. Um, but uh, basically, you know, heading out to Sydney and then Melbourne. And you can kind of see Melbourne being much more of a suburban architecture. Not a good situation. But the nice thing about Melbourne is, uh, hey, man, forget about this whole work culture downtown. Try to get something along here or somewhere else. Sydney, the property expenses, I think, are just ridiculous. So that's one of the reasons for kind of uh, Melbourne. So it kind of loads up here. And a pretty detailed map in a second so i have to kind of shift this so you can kind of see a uh, nice part about so if you're using this economically you kind of know that that's basically the economic you know probably in here but this is the trap the traffic jams are out there maybe kind of even a separate city here so not to use traffic as a gauge for where you should be but maybe where you shouldn't be 
um, and just kind of understanding what people are trying to do in terms of driving um, and kind of some interesting new spots here. So maybe right in here, why doesn't Melbourne move some of their new projects into here? You know, so just questions like that. Um, I'm going to just quickly try to get to Perth um, because Perth was really interesting just as a totally different side of Australia and see if we can look at the traffic here. So, uh, so you can kind of see, uh, I, I didn't really like Perth too much. I was really had high expectations, but looked, uh, I looked at the street view actually kind of a few months ago and wasn't too happy. Looked uh, pretty, pretty quiet and dead, but maybe I'm totally wrong. So again, this is kind of a more of a coastal city almost looks like, I don't even know what this looks like, but, uh, uh, but yeah, so it's kind of flat, I guess, here, and you got this little river coming in through here, kind of a downtown center for Perth. So a lot of businesses here. And, uh, you know, on the uh, Google Earth map, if you're really trying to do these uh, economic studies, so like this, like if we wanted to go to Sydney here, it does add a lot of these, see all these little details here. So this is like if you just wanted to spot check it and see like where is all the businesses so I, I added like everything so it's taking a little while to load and you kind of see it's just gonna take a while to load so but that gives you a good idea so you can do that for every city and zoom in pretty carefully and then kind of get an idea ah, where's the cool cafes do the same thing for Melbourne and even up here in Brisbane so Brisbane may be super interesting too just from a you know I saw a lot of mining companies kind of up in this area um, and even oil and other projects, but this area, I think this is the Great Barrier Reef right here. So there's a lot of wildlife here in Australia that is, it's not like if you go to uh, Indonesia, you're kind of almost invading. I mean, you're still invading some of the space here, but it's a lot like when you're on these islands, that's like almost exclusively for those animals or whatever. So, but here, you know, you can kind of be on the main island land. So. Maybe that's one of the reasons for Brisbane, maybe much more wildlife kind of centric attitude and lifestyle. Um, but uh, you can kind of see this here, the way Brisbane looks. And I'm really sorry with all these labels. I think I got to, just got to almost turn those off. Um, but uh, I think, oh geez, so it's not, actually the one that I need to do is this one. So I think, ah, oh, here we go, places. So. If I turn the places off, it leaves only the Wikipedia entries, which is kind of nice. I, I love to keep the Wikipedia ones because it's just kind of cool. So this is kind of a nicer alternative, right? It looks looks uh, pretty nice here up in Brisbane, actually. I could totally, uh, could totally see myself uh, hanging out here. But it's just so far from everything, which is the problem. So, And uh, in general, we can look at Sydney really quick because it won't be so... Um, crowded and all these little wikipedia entries are primarily like the cooler spots and things so you can kind of see here probably the sydney opera house and so on so sydney is just really extraordinary because it's got all this interesting saleable kind of land but this is actually not a whole lot there's only two miles so it's kind of hard it's kind of sad how few people sail um, but there are some some of the world's best sailors are in australia and whoa you can see all these buildings just gigantic um and i think i have this set wrong to be kind of exaggerated so these buildings are not miles up into the air but sorry about that but you can basically kind of see the skyline there for all this downtown and then kind of another downtown for sydney here and we might just take a look at melbourne um whoa so melbourne here kind of the same deal right so you got we already looked at this so uh but uh but anyway so you can kind of see these clusters of wikipedia entries and that can help give you a guide for uh all kinds of things if you just want to get a quick informational details uh, like for example this looks like the port of melbourne so if you want to find out about the port of melbourne for uh, importer exports so uh i'll just switch back here so again we're over here on perth now this is an incredible map um and uh it didn't load because it's trying to do some kind of subscription thing um so it's also free and i centered this on australia so you can 
this is all the airports in Australia, and then you can kind of see how the airport situation works up into here. Now you can scale these airports down um, to like top 100 airports, and that actually helps uh, if it works. Uh, it didn't really work, but may have to reload or something. But but in general, uh, this is live traffic data, so kind of see uh, you know most of the air traffic being here and actually quite a bit of air traffic over here in New Zealand um, which is interesting so and actually uh, look at that Brisbane kind of but actually if you really looked at the details here it looks like Sydney is pretty much the main so actually I wanted to show you one other really cool thing I'm gonna pause this for a second Okay, so if you go to a flight thing like this, you can uh, explore this, and it's kind of hard. Google doesn't make it very easy to understand this, but if you do this, you can select a city like Sydney, and then you can start seeing what, like a map, and you have to do it one week trip in the next six months or something. And let's just say, because if you're flying that far, you should seriously stay for a while. So, uh, so in general, from Sydney, it's like $100 nonstop to Brisbane, and about 60 bucks so these these prices should be fairly good but uh, again this is coronavirus times and we can do out to America now so I'm gonna zoom out to the rest of the world kind of see what the prices are um, just globally so taking a little while to uh, load this up but uh, essentially about a thousand dollars to get to uh, uh, Sydney from America and even New York another pretty much the same I'm up here in Idaho but uh, basically uh, it is kind of expensive so what I've found is you know these non-stop flights or oh this is round trip so that's round trip price so $848 round trip um, so what you might want to do is do a multi-city trip and kind of like figure something out I've noticed that Manila is pretty cheap, and Bangkok, but I don't know if I'd fly into Bangkok, not exactly a very polluted city. Uh, but you can do some kind of like a roundabout way. Um, so if you do this for just one way, it will be a lot less prices, obviously. So you can see to Tokyo, $238. So basically Tokyo being a big, low, and affordable price range from Sydney. So kind of making a lot of trips there and then also Singapore so basically Singapore being very cheap in Tokyo so that tells us in terms of business and international trade something new right and then also London being only $500 so that's uh, anyway whatever it's this is only one way so gotta look at the round trip too so but it's nice to look at the one way because you can do a multi-city so anyway this is super interesting to take a look at uh, and in addition to just seeing the the actual what's going on live right now so it's kind of funny to see the airplanes these are smaller airplanes bigger airplanes they actually got different size it's maybe a little propeller plane bunch of little propeller planes custom little jet it's just cool to see everything so and i'm going to just zoom in on sydney really quick we can kind of see where the airport is in downtown city and good news is they got a couple airports here right so maybe this is their main international airport and they got another one here, kind of close to uh, downtown, and then kind of a maybe small private airport. And uh, even a little helicopter flying around right now, you see that guy. So, uh, but that's that's basically Sydney, um, and then there's the prices and so on. Uh, going back to demographics, this is the looks to be the official Australian government website for their demographics. I'm not gonna grab all their data and graph it for you. I already graphed some of this here. Um, but you can get it in more detail than even I have. And here is a very cool map just showing the topology. So you can kind of see those mountain ranges here and kind of see this, this interesting mountain range here. And remember Antarctica having the uh, very interesting South Pole down there. So and kind of seeing uh, Auckland, their main busy place over there and kind of uh, really beautiful mountains. I love mountains. So... And that's actually another reason why I was studying Philippines and uh, Indonesia, just because of the uh, great environment and everything. So now the environment um, for uh, business and things uh, is interesting. This is a Global Forest Watch website. And you have agriculture here, forest in 
kind of a darker green and shrubland and grassland, right? So we know from the other maps that uh, this was definitely desert and kind of a different kind of foresty area than the rest of Asia. And that was predominantly because of the climate map. And I think I can zoom on the other map and kind of show you what was going on with that. But we'll do that maybe later. So uh, here's a mining on kind of industry resources. So you see, uh, so from an investment standpoint, one of the reasons I got interested in Australia is because maybe I could make some money. Um, and you kind of see, relatively speaking, Australia kind of, you know, everyone's heard of Africa mining, uh, but actually a lot of these companies surprisingly are headquartered in Australia. So, and certainly a lot here in Southern China and even America and the rest of the world. Uh, but this is a USGS map that's pretty great. Um, also loved this map a lot to kind of think about the early history of Australia. This is indigenous people's map. Um, I can maybe zoom in for it or you can just get it from ResearchGate right up here. Kind of see the indigenous people up in Brisbane, interestingly, right? And then uh, Sydney and then even Melbourne and Tasmania. So I'm really interested in Tasmania and this almost being very indigenous and then indigenous here. But this might actually be... I don't know, Indonesian indigenous. So, uh, but anyway, so here's an old 1915 map. I thought it was just cool looking. Wanted to get that map on there. Now, in terms of economics and farming, um, you can kind of see uh, not a whole lot of farming going on in Australia. Um, and actually, it being pretty tough, right? So, there's some stuff up towards Brisbane, and uh, we could kind of match that up. So, most of this farming. Uh, crop is crop yield, so this is quality of the farmland. Uh, but anyway, I gotta hold on a second. So, uh, there is just a ton of data, right? So, on a climate map, this is average annual temperature, so you can kind of compare it and see. Well, this is really like Florida, this area here is like so. Most of Australia is basically like you know, southern, at least southern part of North America here, and then kind of getting colder only once you get up into the mountains and also off into New Zealand being like average temperature of 40 degrees. So uh, it could get cold, um, but it actually doesn't get very cold. So I'm actually surprised at this map. I thought it would be a little bit, tiny bit colder than this. So this is probably because of the closeness to the ocean and just currents. And I do have a current map, but anyway, well, here's kind of the energy. So you can kind of see they're using water resources, so basically streams and rivers, and then uh, different types of, uh, you know, like they got wind power along here. And uh, some companies would be interesting, I would be interested in trying to see, and then a lot of solar. There is a solar map that we could take a look at. So geological map of Australia, you can kind of see, um, we did look at that uh, funny, funny map uh, showing the asteroids here, but, uh, in terms of the, uh, where are we? Oh my gosh, sorry about this. Um, but in terms of uh, the uh, geological stuff, this is one of the better maps I've found. Um, and you can just see, it, the reason I like this map is it gives you an idea for complexity. So I really like complexity. So again, Brisbane looking very complex up here with the geology and probably being very fun and interesting. But then again, could get earthquakes and that wouldn't be too great would it so um and you can kind of see sydney being all part of this same interesting plate um and then uh, just trying to look up north here so and then melbourne kind of being part of this whole geological thing so that doesn't really show up on the temperature graph this doesn't show up on any other things and then you can see perth kind of being part of this pink stuff and i'm actually globally when you uh, zoom out here you know you might have a favorite type of geology so just what you're interested in I'm certainly interested in this Tasmania here but this looks pretty interesting but it also looks fairly straight and uh, this looks super smooth and interesting wow there's a underground underwater thing out here but and uh, just comparing it so Australia being I mean being so many mining companies there that's you know this uh, I think a lot of the mining going on, I don't know, in here in this pink area, it's called ingen ingenious rock, like genius. Um, but, uh, and then here's like the water problems. So you can kind of see 
more water problems basically in the south here and then maybe they have water here so even in Perth so that's not a good situation really for water and certainly just with so many people this is water stress so they take a bunch of different calculations so you can do water supply so there might be a lot of water but how many people do you have and so on so and or water demand so this is the water demand graph and then you can do this but if you combine everything you can do that's the one we looked at so that's that and then here's oil resources internationally and globally kind of see this uh two spots so there's basically some possibilities for that um this might have been because of ancient history um, but certainly that's a lot of oil there and you can see in the middle east kind of compare that um so to speak and uh, here again is kind of another graph it doesn't really match up with that other one and i actually like that because this actually looks pretty detailed but who knows and there's so there's probably a lot of since since australia at least on their uh, you know this was like something like 50 percent of their economy right so certainly um you know this is a big deal so the mining and uh all that was actually over here, but I, I think there was some, yeah, this is the oil spot I was thinking of. So I thought it was funny because it's near this area called Darwin, um, but, uh, and just this oil area here, and you can see even uranium, there's some rare earth companies in Australia. And here's another way of looking at this um, map. I think this is pretty detailed. I found this on uh, the agriculture website. Um, and here's an internet map. So. How's the global internet work with Australia? So basically, Sydney is kind of in charge of it here, and then Perth kind of actually being uh, the real fast internet heading out to uh, perhaps uh, it's like the Middle East there. So you can't really even get to uh, Europe without going through the Middle East. But if you want to go to directly to America, looks like you're going out to Hawaii there, and you can click on any one of these and find out more. This obviously is a very interesting internet area just to check. Um, and this is the infrastructure. So the electrical lines, um, this actually gets pretty detailed and pretty cool. So you can see kind of Perth probably feeding, uh, feeding the feeding the electrical there. And you can see uh, kind of uh, outside of Sydney and uh, Melbourne and uh, just kind of an unusual amount of lines going out to, to the middle of nowhere. Um, and uh, this will get even more detailed. Now it's starting to add. So if you add the key to this, it will show you what kind. So this is hydroelectric, and these are coal. So those are coal power, and that's probably because their economy is so dependent on this. And here's now Sydney. So some new power plants showing up. And it just keeps getting more and more detailed, um, and it's just great. So uh, I use this all the time. Uh, it's really interesting to look at uh, developing world, like places like India and Europe and America and uh, so on. This actually looks a lot like South America to me. So I'm going to take a pause here. Um, there's a lot more data. I might even stop this. So there's demographics of Sydney. This is kind of like showing... Uh, distribution here um and i think that's just uh, where they're from so you have like 100 person each one each dot is uh, 100 people some are from britain greece china so if you want to see who's from greece they got a lot from light blue so you can kind of see these light blue i'm not even sure which these are blue or this is light blue so this greek population kind of being there so that would be an interesting map to kind of look at um, if you're from some other area. And you can see uh, birthplace by origin. So you can see quite a lot of people from India, actually, right? Just as many people from India and China. So basically China being uh, pretty heavy here and Vietnam being uh, up there as well. So the interesting thing is to say, hey, why is there more people from Vietnam than Indonesia? If Indonesia is so close, it might be a very important reason. So this data right here i would actually love to keep um just on my uh uh graph here so i would just do uh international and uh that way i can kind of graph this at some other point uh but uh that was sydney and then they got the same kind of like another map here just showing some neighborhoods and you could probably get some uh uh, vector files and graph this on a free 
uh, vector based uh, like kind of a mapping tool. I forget the name. QGIS is I think the name. Um, and Melbourne kind of showing the same demographics and a little population. So you can kind of see around uh, 19, uh, was that 62, things really changing and then kind of leveling off again. And what it might look like in Melbourne. Street View would be a fun thing to do. Um, again, here's all the companies. Um, and it looks like there was uh, about 1,000 uh, plus of them, um, maybe 2,000. And uh, then you might want to just go through and do some other things. So, uh, in general, uh, I hope you've really enjoyed uh, this study. Um, it was fun. Um, there's a lot of things going on around the world. And there it is, Antarctica, one of the original reasons that I started to study this. And Australia. So uh, I hope you really enjoyed this. I had fun. I learned a lot. I still have a ton of more information to figure out, to dive into the details of Australia. And it's just a, a lot of stuff and uh, really interesting. I hope to uh, try to do some fun things. And I don't know, maybe I can even visit there. Um, I hear about people selling to Australia being more environmentally friendly and uh, seems like a great place um, and hope you enjoyed. See you.